Today, we're talking about laser scanning best practices. Laser scanning, especially with Trimble X7, has revolutionized the modeling of crash and crime scenes. But there are little things the operator of the instrument can do to make the instrument perform at its very best, reducing time in the field and time doing registration and cleanup back in the office. This week, we're talking about best practices and helpful techniques to make your laser scan maps as accurate as possible and to speed up your time from field to finish. Welcome back to Trimble Forensics Tech Tip Tuesdays. Trimble has been in the business of laser scanning a long time. Now we're changing the way the world works, and that includes the forensic application of laser scanning technology. Some have marketed their laser scanners to law enforcement and public safety organizations as a sort of one-tap mapping equipment that magically does everything for the officers on scene. But then once the purchase is made, the officers discover that there's a lot more going on on the back end that they were aware of. Or, worse yet, they're never told what is happening, only to discover these things when a scene mapping goes bad or a court case is lost due to fundamental misunderstanding of how and why their instrument does what it does. Laser scanners gather lots and lots of measurements in a short period of time, without a human telling them what to measure and what not to measure. The gathering of all of these points of data creates a sort of picture of the surroundings. Now, if you think of your scene as a complete puzzle, the instrument sees part of the puzzle at a time, gathering information about each piece. Now, when you move from one place to another in your scene, the instrument gathers more information about the puzzle that surrounds it. Now, in order to be able to fit the pieces of the puzzle together, there needs to be some common features between each piece. The more in common between the pieces, the better the fit is between those pieces. This commonality between pieces is called overlap, and generally the more overlap you have between stations, the better the pieces can be put together. Now, you're looking for overlap that has features that easily match up. Cylinders or flat planes are easy for the software to see and match up. But if you have a lot of flat planes such as walls, it's good to have some of them at right angles to one another. Long, flat walls without any other identifying features can be tough to link together with any degree of certainty. Now, while we're on the topic of things to use for linking scans together, let's look at wide open spaces. Now, in this scene, you can see the vehicle in the middle of the scene, and things look pretty good as long as you don't look too close. If you look out a little ways further, the signs and telephone poles have a little bit of a registration problem. Now, this comes from using the nearby car as the source of registration geometry. The tiniest of error up close equates to large errors further away. Without much of anything but the complex curves of the car to use for registration, this is what the software uses as its best fit scenario. Now, something we can do to help out here is put some sort of junk out in the grass, such as an instrument case or a unit provided it doesn't move, or another ob large object to act as a registration aid. Now let's next talk about things that move. If you have things moving around the scene, such as a fire truck parked in the scene for one scan, but then it's gone in the next, the perspective software sees this as having inconsistency between scans. This consistency number is a guide for spotting potential problems. Now if you know something moved and you see a drop in the consistency number, that's to be expected. However, if nothing changed between stations and the consistency percentage is low, you may have a registration problem. Again, this number is the consistency between the two scans that you tell it to compare. Our last tip comes from mirrors, reflective objects, and glass. Laser scanners send out beams of light and rely on them bouncing back to model the scene around them. It goes without saying, mirrors make radical changes to the result of that bouncing of light. Now, in this bathroom, we had a large mirror, and we scanned the room without covering that mirror. The result is the bathroom being projected onto the other side of the wall in the scene. Now, while we can go into Trimble RealWorks Forensic and clean this up after the fact easily enough, sometimes it's advantageous to just cover the mirror on scene and prevent the problem from happening to begin with. A roll of butcher paper and some masking tape may save you quite a bit of time in the long run. Also on the topic of glass, glass can bend the light beam or do other unpredictable things to it. 
Now we have a spec sheet that gives us the accuracy specifications of our instrument, but that accuracy assumes the laser beam is traveling through free air. What happens when it goes through glass panes such as windows is anybody's guess, as each pane of glass has different properties. If you need to go through a window, open it up to give an unobstructed view through. Those are just some of the scanning tips and best practices we have for you. Now, if you'd like to know more information about the Trimble X7 forensic scanning solution, drop us a comment below, or to find a Trimble partner near you, check out our dealer locator. We'll leave a link to it below. Stay safe, and I'll see you all again next week.